Today we're going to talk about servant leadership and a lot of times when we hear the, hear the term public servant we think of politicians or government officials, things like that. And though we know that those two words are supposed to be synonymous, they're obviously, they don't correlate very well because we often find that politicians and governments, they don't generally serve us the way that we thought that they would. For example, this is often the frustration that people have with politicians. They make all these promises, say, if you elect me, then I will do this, 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 and this for you, right? I'm here to serve you. I'm here to be your humble servant. Just elect me and I'll try and help you guys. But so often, once they get into office, we notice that they start getting wealthy and gain more power and all these different things. We start to think, where where did it all go wrong? How did this? They, how did they get so corrupted? How did they go from, I want to serve you, I want to make your life better, to I want you to serve me, I want you to uh, make my life better. And they gain more power, more greed, more, more wealth and all these different things. But Jesus warns us about this, telling us that this is a temptation that we will have. This is a temptation that non-Christians obviously have. It says, James and John, they, they came to him one day and it was they were his disciples and they said, Lord, we'd want, we want to, to rule with you, right? We want to be set at your left hand and your right hand when your kingdom comes. When you start taking power, we want to be right there with you. We want to have power with you and things like that. And Jesus says, you don't know what you ask, right? And the other 10 disciples, when they heard what James and John were asking for, they become very angry with them because they were trying to basically take more authority uh, in the situation. And Jesus, he, he turns this situation into a lesson, a lesson that can be applied both universally and uh, timelessly. And he talks about in verse 42 of Mark chapter 10, he says, but Jesus called them to him and saith unto them, you know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. So basically he's saying those who are the non-believers, those who are uh, don't believe in God or don't have respect of God, they try to gain power. They try to have lordship over other people. But then he goes on to say, but so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever you will be chiefest shall be servant of all. So he's telling them the complete contrast. He's saying, if you want to be great, don't follow what the Gentiles or what the non-Christians or the non-believers, don't do what they do. Do what I have said and be servant. Don't be trying to rule over people, try and serve people. And those who want to be greatest must be servant of all. And Jesus says that he's imitated this, right? He has been the great example of this to us because he says, for even the son of man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. So Jesus, who was God, right? God made flesh, it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And of course, earlier it said, and the word was with God and the word was God. So Jesus is God in the form of man, comes down and he says, I didn't come to be ministered to. I didn't come to be served. I came to serve and to give his life even to, as a ransom for many, right? He came so much with a servant heart that he came to give his life to save us. And he's saying, you guys need to be like that, right? He's saying, you guys need to imitate what I, your master has done as I serve others, as I serve you, right? Jesus was even taking on the position of a slave at one point where he would get down on his knees and wash the disciples' feet, something that was often reserved for the slaves of the household, for the servants of the household. Jesus did that for his followers. And he's saying, if I do this to you, if I am ministering, if I am serving, I, your master, am serving, you need to be serving also. So this is the complete opposite of what is often our temptation, right? Our temptation in leadership is we want to gain more power. We want to gain more authority. We want to gain uh, those underneath us serving us. We want to maybe gain more wealth or whatever it might be. But Jesus says, no. If you want to be greatest, you have to be the most serving of them all. So Jesus gives us a complete turnaround of what we would naturally want, what we'd naturally be tempted to do. And he says, serve rather than usurp authority. So hopefully this gives us a little bit of a better understanding of what servant leadership is. It's not trying to gain authority over other people. It's trying to lead them by serving them.